Friend Day, National on Friend Day, or NUD for short, is an occasion that I uh, concocted 11 years ago. It's a day on which I urge Americans to purge, to remove those randos on Facebook who are not your friends. <laughs> of course, this is before arguments over vaccines with Donald Trump removed our friends for us, but it was a simpler time. Here's a good way to tell if you shouldn't be, uh, still be Facebook friends with someone. If they are uh, still on Facebook, that's it, really. That's, uh, and happy nut. I will say this, the only, your only real friends anyway are your dogs. And this is an invention I'm not sure how to feel about. A professor in Glasgow has developed an electronic device that allows dogs to call their owner, video call, uh, whenever they feel moved to, to do that. It's called uh, Dog Phone. I guess they worked so hard on the phone they didn't have time to come up with a name for it. But the idea is that dogs have had it pretty good during the pandemic, but now that a lot of us are going back to work, they're feeling lonely and anxious. So she came up with the Dog Phone. And uh, so when the dog calls, the owner can a either answer the call or ignore the call, which I there's a special place in hell, by the way, for people. <laughs> give their dogs a phone and then ignore their calls. But this is a uh, photo of the inventor's dog using the device. It's shaped like a... I think this dog's calling to tell her he opened that bottle of wine on the table. <laughs> and by the way, what happens if you have this and your dog doesn't call? How sad is that? I mean, Donald Trump doesn't have a dog, not since he broke up with Mike Pence anyway, but he does have a, a My Pillow guy. Mike Lindell, the My Pillow guy, has been licking master's butt again. The Pillow Man scored a one-on-one -on -one interview with the man who will eventually bankrupt him. Lindell sat down with Trump for 36 rambling minutes last night. It was quite a sit down. This, it was like watching a ventriloquist get interviewed by his dummy. <laughs> I, I, won't, I won't subject you to the whole thing, but the, for the most part, it went like this. They could have finished the wall in two weeks. Mm -hmm. They could have had the wall done. It was almost finished. Mm -hmm. We had a tremendous victory in Texas and in Florida. Mm -hmm. These people, made money being president. Mm -hmm. All of a sudden, half the people like you. Mm -hmm. You talk about silencing of the press. Mm -hmm. That's a part of the way it happened. Mm -hmm. We had some tremendous successes. Mm -hmm. I think we're getting them out. Mm -hmm. They nabbed another one. Mm -hmm. We swamped them. Mm -hmm. Obama. Mm -hmm. What could be crazier than that? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I think they call that pillow talk. But you agree with every word that came out of Trump's mouth. And look at these guys. I mean, it's like Trump is interviewing for the concierge job at the airport Radisson. <laughs> That's actually Mar-a-Lago. Uh, uh, tuxedo Trump squeezed this interview in between raids on the fondue fountain and Mar-a-Lago. Mike Liddell went through every one of his debunked claims of election fraud, and the president just ate it up and uh, thanked Mike with a bigly compliment. You are a fighter, and I'll tell you, this country someday, I really believe this country someday is going to be very appreciative of what you Oh, well, thank you. But right. <laughs> He's a fighter. He's a pillow fighter. He's... I think that compliment was Trump's way of saying, get me the hell out of here, because about two seconds later, Mike got the hook. You're well, a great I'll... patriot. I will say this, what I've learned Postmates is... Postmates for President Trump? What's that? Postmates. I'm the president's lunch. <laughs> Your nuggets are cold. Yeah, you don't want cold nuggets. So Mike Lindell has a... The Postmates guy showed up. On, uh, on Black Friday, Mike Lindell is hosting a 96-hour webcast, during which he promises uh, to file a lawsuit that will overturn the results of the 2020 election. The Mike Lindell Moronathon, as they're calling it, will run from midnight the Wednesday before Thanksgiving through midnight on Sunday. And what better way to spend the holiday weekend than that? You know those videos of like 4,000 people stampeding into a Walmart, beating each other with waffle irons? That's what's going on in Mike Lindell's head all the time. <laughs> Other than that, it wasn't a good day for conspiracy theorists. Jacob Chansley, also known as the QAnon shaman, was sentenced to 41 months in prison for storming the Capitol on January 6th. Uh, Chansley is repentant. He gave a 45-minute speech to the court during which he cited Jesus Gandhi and quoted the Shawshank Redemption. He apologized for storming the Capitol. He said he often looks in the mirror and tells himself, you really messed up royally. <laughs> Maybe if he looked in the mirror sooner, he would have noticed he has a, a dead raccoon on his head. And, but we also heard from his lawyer, a guy named Albert Watkins, who was asked about Trump's culpability in the events of January 6th. 
Um, well, if you're asking my opinion, uh, you know, my opinion is meaningless. I will say that I would probably be far more effective over a beer with President, former President Trump, even if he didn't have a beer, because I understand he doesn't drink beer, but I'd have a beer. And I'd tell him, you know what? You got a few things to do. You need to clear this mess up and taking care of a lot of the jackasses that you up because of January 6th. Now, in the meantime, I might talk to him about some other things that I'd agree with him on. But my opinion doesn't mean Eloquent gentlemen. You know who he reminds me of? Uh, Mr. Rogers, you remember from the neighborhood? <laughs> Emma, the big story here in LA is the Staples Center, our Staples Center, where the Lakers have won championships and the Clippers uh, play, is <laughs> getting a new name. Starting Christmas Day, Staples Center will be known as Crypto.com Arena, which doesn't sound creepy at all, does it? It's <laughs> Crypto.com, I guess, is a currency platform based in Singapore. They paid $700 million to get the name. To, it is the most lucrative naming deal in the history of sports. It's twice as much as it costs to build the Staples Center. <laughs> but a lot of people around here don't like the new name at all. You know you're in a weird spot when fans are like, we have to go back to when it was named after an office supply store. <laughs> it's a bad name. It's, but thankfully, Crypto.com is still isn't the worst named arena in sports. That honor. Uh, belongs to the New Orleans Pelicans Smoothie King Center. Which... <laughs> in New York, the huddled masses will gather once again to watch the ball drop in Times Square this New Year's Eve, as long as you have proof of vaccination. And no one was more excited about this than outgoing New York Mayor Bill de Blasio, who reminded us uh, we are going to miss his this special brand of pizzazz he brought to America's largest city. It's coming back. This New Year's Eve, Times Square, everyone come on down. We're celebrating. All right, and that was that. It's, ideas like that always start with, you know what would be fun? <laughs> so the ball drop is back, and so is the Tiger King. Joe Exotic, the season two of the Netflix series. I guess it's a series. Who knew it was going to be a series? I thought it was done. Uh, uh, Tiger King 2 came out today. Is anyone going to watch this? I don't know, it feels weird because like during the pandemic, we were all trapped in the house and it came on. It, now it's like looking at text messages you sent during a breakup. You, I, it's like, <laughs> I was a different person back then. I just want to move on. But the creators of the show saw some kind of an opportunity in spite of the fact that Joe Exotic is in prison and presumably not on the show. And with their star in the slammer, you might be wondering who the center of the series is. Surprise, surprise, turns out it's one of the more overlooked characters from season one. With Joe Exotic in prison, there's a new king in town. Fasten your seatbelts for the power of Carol Baskin's husband, Howard. You're following me again. <laughs> Whether he's filing papers. This is the current legal stuff. Laying down the law. We had filed a motion for summary judgment. Eating shrimp or reading his fan mail. And by the way, that is a penis, a horse penis. That was my recollection. Howard's on the chain and off the hook. Go, Go Charlotte. Charlotte, it's, it's your, your birthday. birthday. We're, We're gonna, gonna party like it's your birthday. Tiger King 2, the Howard Lee Lion. Roar. That's big, that's big, but it, the big showbiz news is the trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. Did you watch the, have you seen that? I was actually watching it with my kids last night. I watched it with the kids last Do you watch this, Gary? No, you may, I did not watch it. I watched it with my daughter and son. My son loved it, my daughter hated it. She thought it was scary. But I also had an idea, I thought I would pay to see this movie trailer. Like, I'd pay a dollar to see it. None of you would, though, would you? Oh, yeah. All right. Anyway, it came out last night. Everybody's talking about it, so much so that um, this hashtag was trending as soon as the trailer came out. Someone inadvertently messed up the capitalization here of Doc Ock. And, uh... <laughs> well, you, you get it, I guess. Dr. Octopus is one of uh, many villains in this movie. In the trailer, we saw five members of the Sinister Six and now uh, we are, I am especially pleased to reveal 
who the sixth sinister will be in a, an exclusive second first look at the new new trailer for Spider-Man No Way Home. When you botched that spell where you wanted everyone to forget the Peter Parker Spider-Man, we started getting some visitors from every universe. <laughs> Sorry, what was your name again? They call me Craven. Samantha. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, seriously, what's your actual name? They're a danger to our universe. Are you ready to have your head hanging on my wall in my den? He's not. Thanks, everybody. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. It was really a dream come true. <laughs> and Guillermo, I promise I won't forget you when I'm a movie star. All right, for all sure. Right. Hi, I'm Jimmy Kimmel. If you want to see all our latest videos, click the subscribe button. And if you don't, click anyway and close your eyes when they come on.